Chicken pox is the topic, also known as varicella, and at the end I have a few clinical vignettes to share. Well, chicken pox is the name of the um, condition, and another name for it is varicella. Now, I want to make a few things clear so it's not uh, confusing. This condition is caused by a virus named varicella zoster. So, also sometimes abbreviated VZV. Now, what's important to remember to avoid confusion is that chicken pox is what happens in the acute phase. It's the acute phase of this virus. Later on, maybe sometimes years later, you get a condition known as shingles, which is also known as herpes zoster. And that is a, a condition that happens because of the reactivation of this virus, the reactivation uh, of the latent phase of the virus. So can just keep that in mind. Don't confuse the two. And shingles, essentially, very quickly, is it's a very painful rash that occurs in a dermatomal distribution. So that's essentially the two uh, rashes that are caused by varicella zoster virus. But in this video I'll concentrate on chicken pox. So how do you distinguish chicken pox? Well most of the time it happens in kids and it's described either as papules or vesicles and they're usually on these red bases and they kind of appear in crops and later they can become pustular and then later they can crust over. Now the location where they can appear are often the face or the trunk and they tend to appear in crops so keep that in mind. One very characteristic uh, symptom is that they're very pruritic, very itchy. And in terms of contagious, they're obviously contagious but they cease to be contagious when all the lesions have dried and crusted over. So that's an important thing to remember on clinical vignettes when they're talking about when these lesions are crusted and dried then that's pretty much when the the uh, rash is no longer contagious. Unfortunately, the rash by itself is sometimes not the only thing. There's complications, and there's several of them, but they're quite rare. So I really just wanted to talk about the most common one. And the most common complication of chickenpox is secondary bacterial infection. See, what happens is the person starts itching, and when they itch, they can cause this uh, bacterial infection of the vesicles and the most common bacteria are streptococcus and staphylococcus so just keep that in mind in terms of complications the most common diagnosis is really just a clinical diagnosis looking at the rash so I encourage you to look up pictures of this on the internet you'll see these red vesicles or papules oftentimes appearing on the face or the trunk in crops. Treatment, there's really two cornerstones to treatment. There's treating the virus with antivirals. So medications like valacyclovir or famcyclovir. And then the other part is of course the treating the pruritus because that's a very significant part of the rash and that's usually done with antihistamines. And 
you're not only trying to relieve the symptoms, but you're also trying to prevent secondary bacterial infection that can happen when a person is itching profusely. And one final thing before I get to the vignettes is that there is a vaccine. It's called the varicella vaccine, appropriately. And this vaccine is used to provide effective prevention of this condition. So now let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. One morning, a 77-year-old woman woke up feeling vaguely unwell with too little energy to get up to do anything. Later in the day, she developed a headache and by bedtime a low-grade fever. That night, her sleep was disturbed by an itch on the left side of her waist, and by the morning she felt an itchy, tingling, stinging, throbbing sensation interspersed with sharp stabs of extreme agonizing pain. Two days later, a hive-like rash appeared on her waist in the same area as the pain. The rash made a belt-like pattern in a stripe that started in the middle of her spine and extended to the left around her body to the midline of her stomach, completely confined to the left side. Well, they want to know what is the um, cause, what is the bug. Well, this question is describing shingles. So remember, you have varicella zoster virus in its acute phase. It causes chicken pox. But then later, many years later, because as you can see, she's 77 years old, a latent reactivation. Reactivation of the latent phase can result in shingles. And shingles is this belt-like or band-like rash that appears in a dermatomal distribution across the skin. So the answer to this question is A. Second one, 25-year-old mother takes her 5-year-old child to see a pediatrician for a rash that started on her trunk and spread to her face and extremities. According to the mother, the rash occurred in various stages. It began as crops of small red papules that had progressed to teardrop vesicles on an erythematous base. These vesicles became cloudy, broke open, and then formed scabs. Which of the following is the most common complication of this infection in a normal host? Well, they're talking about the most common complication of chicken pox is secondary bacterial infection due most commonly to chronic pruritus. And finally, a 12-year-old pregnant girl comes to the clinic because of a three-day history of fever and itchy rash. Her little brother had similar rash two weeks earlier. She has received routine prenatal care and she has had an uneventful pregnancy so far. Temperature is 101. Physical exam shows a generalized vesicular rash in various stages of evolution. There are vesicles and crusted lesions on her arms, legs, trunks, and face. A complete blood count and liver function tests are normal. At this time, you should. Is trying to touch on what kind of uh, situation or uh, advice you would give to her because of her pregnancy. Well, the best piece of advice or simplest piece of advice it has to do with contagiousness. And she will cease to be contagious once the lesions have dried and crusted. So the correct answer to this question is C. Um, go through these other choices. Administer the varicella vaccine. Uh, this is actually recommended for individuals uh, that are 12 months or greater who have not had varicella. It's not given to individuals with the disease. Choice B, admit her to the hospital for IV uh, acyclovir. Uh, sometimes that could be true, but this patient seems to have an uncomplicated case of varicella. Uh, she doesn't really have any significant findings other than the rash, so probably not the best uh, thing at this time, a little too aggressive. Uh, choice D, salicylates. Uh, not a good choice because they're linked to Rye syndrome. And remember, she's only 12 years old. Aspirin used in a child can cause Rye syndrome, so not the best choice. And E, um, tell her that she is no longer contagious since the rash has already appeared. Uh, that's actually not true. The She's considered contagious until all the lesions are dried and crusted. So that's incorrect. So the answer to this question is C.